Hey guys, it's Brenda from my wee wee brunch kiddo. Today is Monday and I am home on holidays and I couldn't be happier because I'm finally here to do videos for you guys. I love spending time with you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Today I have Etienne Soleil. He is the Bluebell Sculpt by Cassie Brace and he was reborn by Lacey Molson in Canada and he came to me as a girl but I changed him into a boy. He is so sweet. He's one of my favorites and he's actually a big boy. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> today I am here to do a new fun tag that Mia did. Uh, wishes and wonder. So thanks Mia for doing this tag for us to do. And I noticed that Linda also did this tag, but I haven't watched her video yet. So I'll watch her video right after this one. But um, I just came on very quickly. Hopefully I don't ramble. <laughs> Please <laughs> don't ramble. Uh, she has 10 questions and it's called Little Me. So basically about little Brenda when I was young and <laughs> questions about my childhood, <clears throat> about our childhood. And please, if you guys do this tag, please link your video down below or let me know that you've done one and I can go to your channel and check it out because it's so much fun learning new things about each other. So... <clears throat> 10 questions and sorry if I have to uh, clear my throat every once in a while. Um, I don't know. I must be having like a summer cold because f like for the month of June, it was so hot here. Like very hot. Like in the 30 degrees Celsius and we had heat warnings and <clears throat> and now lately the past week has been really cool We've had rain, finally had some rain, um, and it's very windy lately, so, but anyways, there I am rambling again, okay, I'll be right back. I will also link Mia's video down below so you, that you can listen to her answers and play along as well. She also has the questions in her description tag. So little me tag, question number one. Were you born an old soul or young, wild, and free? Um, I, <laughs> okay, around adults, I am an old soul. But of course, the inner child, the inner me is always young, wild, and free. I always did listen to authority and listen to rules, obeyed rules. Um, well, because there were serious consequences if we disobeyed. So, <clears throat> I was born in 1973, so that means my young self was in the late 70s and the early 80s, and discipline back then is a lot different than it is now. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Number two, were you a city kid or a country bumpkin? Um... <clears throat> I grew up at a lake, actually. We moved there when I was four years old into a very small community. It was uh, the government housing community for the airport. There were only meteorologists, um, airport uh, mechanics, um, the airport security, and like the, the radio, you know, the people that watch in the tower and talk to the airplanes, like the the radar and stuff so there was that there the airplane people and then we had uh, firemen live at the airport and no one else was allowed to live there so it was a community of maybe 20 families at, at the most and thus most of those did not have kids so but there are around 20 houses out there <clears throat> But we, I had the woods as my backyard and the lake as my backyard for many, many years. So I am definitely a country lake bumped in. <laughs> uh, number three, roller skating or bike riding? 
I remember having roller skates, the one with the four wheels on it. Uh, you wear your shoes and you can clip on the wheels underneath. And they had a key that you had to twist and make sure that they fit over your shoe. <laughs> I remember those. Um, I did roller skate, but not as much. I loved the bike ride and that includes in the back trails in the woods. So bike riding, definitely. Wait, I'll be back. I'm having coughing fits again. Number four, ribbons and curls or climb trees and scrape knees. <laughs> Both, but I think mostly climb trees and scrape knees. I was definitely one of those tomboys and I loved, you know what? I was so athletic back then too. I could run, I could climb trees. Honestly, I wanted to be Rambo. <laughs> that's, that's how much I used to run on rocks. Oh my goodness, what was I thinking? I used to, um, oh, I used to do so many things. But you know what, though? Being a young girl, my dad would not allow me to work with any tools. So even if I wanted to build myself a fort, um, I wasn't allowed hammers, rope nails, screwdrivers, nothing. So I used to build shelters with the nature items that I could find. I wasn't even allowed to use any rope. I could have my mom's yarn if I wanted, but I wasn't allowed that. But I could have all this girl stuff if I wanted. So I used to also bring like old kitchen pots out to the forts, which was a lot of fun. I love making mud pies and oh, anyways. I'm just totally going back in my memory zone. By the way, if you hear any yelling, Eric is here at home. He's playing video games in his room. Um, online games, that is. And I'm trying so hard not to cough. But, um, my dad was, I used to love, I never had ribbons in my hair. Because I never had long enough hair. My mom always kept it short, um, <clears throat> but I loved wearing skirts that, like, when you spun, they would, they would flare up, and I loved lace. Um, I loved Holly Hobby things, um, a lot like the Little House on the Prairie, the dresses and the bonnets and the lace. Oh, I loved stuff like that, and also... Growing up in Canada, another popular movie for me was Anne of Green Gables. And they always had beautiful dresses with big puffy sleeves and ruffles. And I used to love that. But I mean, for the most part, I was outside climbing trees <laughs> and scraping knees. I have many scars. <laughs> Number five, books, Barbies, or both? Um, I wasn't really into books until I was like 12 and up. But before that, I had tons of Barbies, tons of dolls, and I loved my Barbies so much. Um, there was a time in school when I was, uh, my academics were, like, not as great as what they were in primary school. So my mom decided to introduce me to novels. <laughs> and can you believe that she introduced me to V.C. Andrews? Yeah, and I love V.C. Andrews, by the way. Like, Flowers in the Attic. That's, yeah, all her novels I just love. And um, she was into, like, Danielle Steele books. And Joan Collins? No, she's an actress. I for or did she write books, too? I can't remember what her name is. I, I thought it was it Jackie Collins. Is it Jackie Collins? Oh, I totally forget. I didn't read her novels, but my mom did. So I did get hooked on to V.C. Andrews, definitely. But I still love my Barbies. Number six, the candy store or the ice cream shop. Growing up at the airport, there was, we had no stores. And town is half an hour away. so And I didn't go into town very often as a child. There was um, a few times I'd go into town with my dad. Well, we didn't go all the way into town. We went to, um, on the way into town, there was this gas station and they had a corner store. And my dad used to buy himself a hot rod and a pep 
bar all like all the time. It never failed, and then I would get cheesies. And I remember, I remember the first time my dad came out with two hot rods, and I was thinking, "Wow, my dad is so lucky," because he would let me have a bite of his hot rod every once in a while, but he never bought me a hot rod. But I remember that very first time he bought me my very own hot rod, and I couldn't have been, I couldn't have felt old like so proud and old and mature and oh I get my own heart run how cool is this so <clears throat> so I guess that was kind of like a candy store um we every summer we did go visit back home which is Ontario southern Ontario that's where both my parents are from they're from southeast Ontario and in town which is a very small town it's called Deseronto which is five minutes away from Napanee. But um, Deseronto had this candy corner store. And we didn't have any money, though, to really spend on ourselves. But every once in a while, my uncles or aunts would treat us to ice cream. And we used to love it so much. <clears throat> but at the airport, we had nothing. Um, we had wild strawberries everywhere. That was my favorite treat. And if you don't know, wild strawberries are extremely small. They're like the size of a pea, like right in your hand. And I didn't even know. Like, you know the strawberries you buy in the stores are huge, right? I've never seen a huge strawberry until I was 12. A domestic strawberry. So you should have seen my eyes the very first time. I saw a domestic strawberry. I'm like, oh my god, I'm in heaven. I didn't know they came that big. <laughs> so yeah, we only had like wild raspberries and wild strawberries. And that was uh, my treat that I would treat myself to. Number seven, Marsha, Jan, or Cindy. In other words, are you the oldest, middle, or youngest child in your family? That's it. Um, I am the oldest, so I guess I'm a Marsha. I only have one brother, and he's three years younger than me. Now, my brother, though, his personality is very different than mine. Technically, he's only my half-brother, but I mean, we grew up together. My mom entered my life when I was, like, just under two. So, she's my mom, even though technically she's my stepmom. But um, there was only my brother and I, and even though I'm older, I didn't act older. <laughs> so, but I mean, around the parents, yes, I was the oldest, I act the oldest, but I was always young kid at heart. My best friends are two or three years younger than I am or even more. So number eight now for your school days. But did you have private school, public school, or Perot? I should have listened to how she said that. Perot Kyle? Perot Kyle? I don't know what that means. Is that a religious school? Maybe? I'm guessing. I've never seen that word before. I went to a public school, which is in the Paw. That's where I live now. So, yes, I live close to my childhood neighborhood um our community at the airport had to uh abandon in 1991 so um yeah our my old <laughs> why is it making me sad <laughs> it's abandoned right now the houses are gone the streets are still there our drivers are still there Fire hydrants are still there. So. But you know what's crazy? In my favorite genre of all, of ever, is dysopian or a, a, apocalyptic type. End of the world survival movies. I love those so much. Um, like Deep Impact movies like, um, oh. War of Worlds. <laughs> I love those types. So anyways, thinking about every time I think about the airport being abandoned and how sad it is. 
sorry, <laughs> I think about my favorite genre, and that's abandoned places. I also am fascinated with abandoned places. And here, my favorite, my own childhood place is abandoned and apocalyptic. I go there, things are grown in. Did you know that my old fort is still there, but it all fell onto the ground and there's the sticks fell in like where they were as my roof. And I used, I used to place big rocks for a path and they're grown in with moss. It's crazy. I should insert a picture. Uh, yeah, every time I get a little emotional about my favorite, my beloved childhood place, um, being abandoned and uh, grown in and life after people. Oh, I used to love that show so much. My place is exactly like that. So <laughs> how ironic is that? <clears throat> so number nine, did I cut or skip classes? Or was I the teacher's pet? <laughs> um, I would never skip or never ever cut. The consequences for that would be extremely harsh. Well, in my eyes, I mean, <laughs> all I have to do is my mom look at me angrily and I feel guilty. <laughs> so... Um, I did cut, skip university classes because no one ever knew except for myself. But um, even though we lived at the airport half an hour away from town, my parents knew if we cut or skip or not. They knew enough people that they kept an eye on us. My mom is extremely social and extremely extrovert. She knows everyone. Everyone knows her. I'm a lot... Like my dad, he's he's open-minded, he's quiet, he's respectful. <laughs> he is actually like the Archie Bunker, really and truly. But <laughs> I mean, but he's accepting. Um, sure, he might say a few bad jokes, but <laughs> um, but my mom and my brother personality is a lot like they're they're really outgoing. They need to know people, they talk, they gossip, they, they, they keep tabs on everything. Um, and as for a teacher's pet, there was only one year I was a teacher's pet. All the other years, um, I was really quiet and reserved and shy. I didn't talk to anyone and I didn't want to talk to my, I never talked to my parents and I never talked to my teachers. Remember, I'm from the late 70s, early 80s. I graduated in 91. This was a time when you didn't really confide in adults. I mean, you confided in your friends and maybe some aunties, cool aunties. But other than that, you don't talk to your parents. You don't talk to your teachers. So, but anyways, grade seven. I had a really amazing teacher, and I was her teacher. But I did things for her. I asked to do things for her. Because in grade 7, at age 12, I knew for sure I wanted to be a teacher. I, I wanted to be a teacher ever since I was 8 years old. But in starting at grade 7 and up, I knew I wanted to be a teacher for sure. And she was a cool teacher. So I wanted to know everything I could about her and her habits and her management skills and her organizational skills. I wanted to know it. So I, I was her teacher pet. So I was with her. Can I do this for you? Can I do that for you? Oh, show me how you do this. Show me how you do that. <laughs> so that was the only year though. My grade eight and all through high school, I didn't talk to any teachers unless I had to which was really rare, so. And the last one, were your favorite memories between the ages of one to 10 or 11 to 20? You know what, I have favorite memories. I have a really good memory. People 
comment to me how well my memory is. Even, even my memory from like my 30s, my 40s. Here I go rambling again. How long did I ramble for? Anyways, guys, this was a lot of fun. I hope that my voice wasn't too horrible. I know that <clears throat> I know that I've been having coughing fits. I hope that I I can edit those out <laughs> properly. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, I was spending some time with Etienne. Look how look how skin tone is like to mine. Isn't that amazing? She Lacey is a wonderful artist. I really love her work. She is into fantasy alternative dolls now. And oh, oh, it's amazing. She does rare pops. Oh, I love her work. Um, Erin and I, Erin from Canoe of Sparkles, she is also into the alternative and fantasy babies. And she, her and Lacey are my two favorite artists for her. But in the beginning, Lacey did, like, just normal, <laughs> normal human babies. But she does both now, and I love them so much. Um, anyways, here I am rambling again. I will link Mia's video again down below. And Linda, if you're watching me, I'm going to come watch yours right away. So anyways, guys, hope that you're having a great day. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day, guys, and until next time, very, very soon. Bye time guys, bye time, love you guys. Until next time, bye.